here from Crossed Anchors Railroad, and we're here in Charlottesville, Virginia, still hanging out for our birthdays, and we're going to this cool store, and look at this, Railtel, get your train on, trains, models, games, and layouts. This place, let's go check them out and see what this model store and trains are all about. Let's go, guys. Yeah. Hey. This is Nathan, the manager, and Brett, the owner, and we're going to talk to them a little later, but let's walk around this store and see what they got, guys. But first, as you can, you can see, they got stuff everywhere. They're covering all the scales, because I believe they, they have N scale, H L O scale, clearly some G scale trains up there. I haven't seen any Z, though, but I don't know many places that keep Z. We actually are going to do Z. Um, we have a supply issue right now. So uh, we are going to actually add all the track and, and vehicles, people, buildings. We've got a few, but we're having trouble getting the stuff. That's really cool. So we're going to look forward to seeing how that grows up here. And let's take a look over this. Let's look at this cool. We'll start out with some end scale stuff. They got a nice selection here. I'm seeing Bachman's, Atlas. Look at this big. Ooh. I love it, Gmo. Oh, Broadway Limited. Those are pretty. Ah, the Berkshire. Is that the same Berkshire I got? No, it's 2724. I have 2696. That's the one we have, isn't it? Uh, can I get some love for my PRR? Always gotta have PRR. No Funkin' Western. Did you see these guys down here? Not yet. Okay. Let me rush them. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I live for. Screw them with you. I like these hind cars. Very much. Those are really cool. They are cool. I'm looking for ore cars in every uh, scale still. Uh, I do see an orange uh, snowplow there. Oh. Now how come they don't make these in O scale? I would buy that. Maybe That's you need to call cool. micro trains. Yeah, oh, they sell the thing. Look at these sweet bridges. Now we're going to get into this, but they do a lot of custom work here, and we'll get more into that, and we'll and uh, Brett will be explaining more about that. But their model work, as you're going to see here, is just spectacular. We have totally been blown away by this. For all you crazy UP fans, there's a big boy for you. Always one of those that seems to be laying around. Always a big boy. <laughs> 4014. Broadway Limited. That's not bad. These models are pretty cool. I like some of their Star Wars stuff back there. I want the alien. Okay. Look, there's Groot. I am Groot. <sighs> These are really nice. Those Rio Grande reefers are pretty. I'm enjoying those very much. Mm. Did you see the Halloween scene right there? Like Dracula? No! Oh, how cool is that? Oh, the little sign fell down. That's kind of neat. Look, they're on the top by the gargoyles. That's cool. There's another casket. Nelson and Arbonne. That's kind of cool. 
That Gundam's awesome. I've never seen this before. These are really pretty. Is that the same guy? Is that one, or are they different? Guys. Oh. Well, I think they're different. That mm -hmm. one's an upgraded version. Because mm. with Gundam, they, they changed them by upgrading them. Oh, okay. And there was also different ones. So. I see a car in my bar. I see two cars in my bar. What are you talking about? I was just looking at some of those go cars back there that I've seen a couple of them already I want to buy. I like that southern box car there. I haven't seen that one and I really like the size of it. I, uh, we don't have any Williams, so mm -hmm. that might be interesting. And I like the P&O up there. You can scoot around here. Yeah. But look, that one has like a thing, Mustangs. I know, come on, let's go look at the HO first, and <laughs> we're going to look at the O scale. Uh, so let's look at these guys. Oh. Ha. Mm. I can see through the ceiling. You can see through the ceiling? I have to go to both of them. Well, please. Ooh, what's that guy back there? Executive line. Interesting. The heavy Pacific. Oh, that Jay's pretty. Mm. Oh, I like that one. Which one are you referring to? The American one right there with the red roof? The Jupiter? Yeah. Okay. You see the sound going over here? Yeah, what's it say on it? Alco 45.3. What's the name of the... Oh, Interstate. Okay. That's kind of cool. I'm not a big Interstate fan. <gasps> right there. Right there in the middle. Is that 1361? No. 64.49. Gotta see my PRRK4. Hey, PRR. you're shaking the camera. It's because it's important. Let your PRR freak flag fly. Can't while well I'm recording. Oh, the people love it. Give the people what they want. And they love a freak flag. Too awesome. I really like that K4. I am not an HO guy, though. I don't think you can whisper that. I'm pretty sure everybody knows. Do that. I don't know. Anthony's having a secret. Cereal. They have a lot of rocket stuff here at Rails and Tails, and a lot of different variety that goes with the entire rocket making system. Corn and flammable. This stuff looks pretty neat. I did this in high school. I built a rocket. I mean, anything that starts out with or engines no, for model <laughs> engines for model rockets. What well, warning? Flammable. It's got to be fun. It's got to be interesting. Star Wars. Okay. Well, this is always great stuff. You guys doing a lot of your own D, uh, do it yourself DIY. These little pieces of the, of the wood like this are great for your detail stuff and being able to uh, do a lot of trim work. I use a lot of these different squares trying to make girders look real and give the three dimensional look to something I was working on on my bridges. And those are always helpful. They got, uh, they got. G scale stuff, and there's more and throughout the store as well. That's a pretty cool white pad. Ooh, that's in clear time. I actually really like that. Ooh, one. And um, some really cool you stuff. You know, I don't there. have a G scale or a car either. No, but I don't see one. Not yet. We'll see. See if we see one. 
Star Wars. Yeah, they have the Star Wars game stuff. A lot of gaming stuff in here as well. Oh, they have a game that. Dude, look at this X-Wing. Isn't that Kylo Ren ship? I don't know. What I, think, I think so. Lots of models. Ooh, look at that orange Corvette. Oh, you might need to buy that. An orange Corvette? Really? That e that's even the best Corvette available. Would you build that? And paint it orange? If it's not already orange? Does it come orange? I don't know. Oh, that's dope. You can just hold on to that. You just hold on to that? I'm pretty sure you're gonna build it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love all these little metal parts they have for the construction of stuff and the um, do-it-yourself stuff. It's really awesome. I didn't... I've not seen this before. Look how little these screws are they have. That's so cool. That is cool. I mean, this is, I mean, definitely, they really have to be able to, everything you need to really do some from scratch building here. Oh, yeah, faces. Oh. Oh, German heads. You can buy Germans. You can buy Americans. Interesting. They have a lot of stuff for the war dioramas. All right, guys, well. Brian here, and we're happy to be uh, in here at... Um, Rail Tales, I didn't want to say the S in the wrong place, Rail Tales, here in Charlottesville, Virginia, and we are lucky enough to be able to have a few minutes to be able to pick the mind of the owner, Brett, here, and he's willing to tell us about his store, the history, and why this store is, I'm blown away by how unique it is as compared to other train stores I've been in. So, Brett, why don't you tell us a little about your wonderful store here you have in Charlottesville, Rail Tales. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, Railtail started in 2012 as a layout construction and train repair service out of my house. Okay. And so I would go to people's houses and build layouts at their house and or build sections of layouts. And I would also do train repairs and all that was done at my house. Uh, the local hobby shop that existed at that time got in some trouble. So we tried to help them out by buying their, uh, their train and model department mm -hmm. and then running it as a separate business inside their space. Uh, they were in more trouble than that, was, than that could help, so they ended up going out of business. When that happened, we moved over here, and we opened here January 24, 2014. Okay. Been here ever since. The focus of the, of the business, because it began as a layout construction business, has mm -hmm. always been layout construction, custom model work, uh, custom train modifications, painting, decaling, but a lot of uh, repairs and a lot of doing uh, decoder installs. Now with those, is it primarily uh, any scale you'll mess with with it? Like you're talking about the... For the repairs, yeah. it's pretty much any scale. Uh, mm -hmm. We do a lot of O-gauge repairs, we do a lot of HO repairs. We try to stay away from N-scale repairs uh, unless they're really newer trains. Uh, older N-scale, for those people who are familiar with the older mm -hmm. N-scales, uh, the repairs are almost always a problem with the gears. The gears crack and then the train is worthless. So and those, those cannot be fixed. They don't make those gears anymore. So we just try to, we generally stay away from that. We do fix modern, uh, uh, anything N-scale made in the last 10 or 15 years or so. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of HO repairs. We do a lot of Markland service. We're one of the few places in the country that does Markland service. And we do O-gauge, but only older Lionel and MTH. Okay. We do not do modern Lionel because it's a different operating system. We can't get the parts. All right. 
We are an MTH authorized service center. We are a service center for North Queensland. Okay, that's awesome. And your your custom work with the layouts, is that any scale or do you pretty much try to stay in HO or N for that? Or? We do that in any scale. Okay. Uh, we've even done S uh, for that. We've done quite a bit of O, more HO than anything else. Sure. Uh, we've done N scale. Uh, we've done a bunch of narrow gauge, different versions, different narrow gauges uh, for HO and both European and American. Uh, we have not done a G scale yet, although there's one in the works that might actually turn into something. We mm -hmm. have not done a Z scale. Uh, we could, mm -hmm. but uh, we haven't actually done one. Okay. So, for, is this, uh, this sounds like this was kind of like your personal passion that the trains were something you did throughout your, uh, like, just... Oddly like, enough, no. No? Uh, when I was a kid, I started off as a plastic welder. And I was very good. I was in the uh, Plastic Robber Society and went to competitions and so on. I was very good at it. My brother was the model railroader. So he did some plastic models and I did some stuff for the railroad because I, occasionally I wanted to do civilian things. So I'd work on a building or something for that. And when that just kind of got put away, like I went off to college you have to do a career and all that sort of thing. And uh, like most people, the modeling and the railroading and everything got set aside for a while. But what happened was I got more and more interested in extreme weathering, I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. Uh, sort of the John Allen tradition of model railroading where everything looks really old and decrepit. And coming from a plastic model perspective where I was doing mili ground military vehicles, which also looked mm -hmm. old and decrepit and beat up. So that became sort of my interest. And okay. so I just kept following it. And then in 1999, excuse me, 1999, I was offered a job to manage a hobby shop a, mm -hmm. uh, a, in, in addition to some other people. And I was going to handle the plastic models and the train portion of the program. Uh, I was completely unqualified to do that but I learned very quickly, and the store was very quickly a success. Um, and then the owner and I had a falling out, and so I went back to my previous profession for a few years, and then that was land surveying. And unfortunately, long ago, you know, some may, people may remember long around 2008, bad things happened in the real estate market. Sure. I wasn't the first person out the door, but eventually, I ended up being out the door, and so I went back and worked for the local hobby shop for a little while, and then got my own business started. But uh, the it when we when I was hired to run the hobby shop, uh, I learned very very quickly and read everything I could get my hands on. Went to train shows, went to hobby shows, asked every question I could think of, talked to everybody that knew about the business. And quickly, I, I wasn't wouldn't say I was an expert. I got mm -hmm. good at the business side, and I got and I got pretty good at doing the modeling part of it. Uh, didn't know that much about the technical part of it until I started getting into doing Marklin mm -hmm. or Mariklin if you're German. Mariklin's the correct pronunciation, but oh, okay. but I'm Southern, so yeah. uh, so it's Marklin. And uh, I really got into doing Marklin. Um, it was a different system, so I wasn't trying to learn a lot of things that I was talking to customers who already knew. You know, doing regular two rail HO, most of my customers knew more than I did. Okay. But doing Marklin, that wasn't the case. Uh, so I was able to master that, become very good at it. And uh, Marklin also happens to be a very, very good operating system and a very good train system. Um, and so that kind of got me back into modeling. And then doing demonstrations, I had to show people how to do these various different things, so I had to learn them myself. So I, okay, how do you make trees? Well, I learned how to make trees mm -hmm. and, uh, one week, and then the next week I do a demonstration of how to make trees. You know, how do you do rock faces? I learned how to do that and then do the demonstration the next week. And that just went on for several years while I was the hobby manager of that, that location. And then when I was going out on my own, of course, you keep learning. Right. Uh, we experiment all the time. Every time new product comes out, we try to get a hold of it as quickly as we can. We experiment, decide whether is this good. Is it good, first of all? 
and is it better than something we already have? Uh, since we're building layouts all the time, uh, time is money. So usually if it saves us time and if it's repeatable, something that you can do over and over again, it's going to be a process that we're going to take on. If it's something that I have difficulty figuring out how to do, chances are we're not going to carry it. Because yeah. it's hard. If, if I can't figure it out with all my experience, how can I expect a customer to, to figure out what they're supposed to do? Mm -hmm. um, for, so for example, that the, the, our decision of which digital command systems to, to, to carry are based on how quickly can I explain how to use it to the customer, mm -hmm. rather than any other criteria. It happens that the system that is easiest to use is also inexpensive, so it's a good combination, but uh, there's a lot of things like that. So we try to, um, we try to stock, stock things that we can teach the customer that we know the customer is going to be able to use successfully. And then, of course, the standbys, the people that already are experts on their own, then we, can, mm -hmm. we, can, we carry products for them as well. But mostly we try to concentrate on things that are pretty easy for customers to use. Now, Bert, you said a couple things in there that have really caught my personal attention that I want to make sure I touch base with, that you brought up that you sound like you, you were talking about how you did demonstrations there, and a little earlier you were talking here, currently at uh, Railtails, you have demonstrations yes. where you show things like weathering, yes. uh, scenery. Every, every Saturday we offer some sort of demonstration. We don't necessarily do it if nobody asks for it and we don't do it. Uh, the, the longer we do it, the less often people come in for them because once you've seen the demonstration, you don't really need to see the demonstration again. They're pretty much the same. Sure. Uh, so the demonstrate, for example, the weathering demonstration I do for the NMRA, I do the same one every year. So um, it's, it's, I mean, they still enjoy it, but it's, it's the same idea. It's like if you've seen the demonstration, you don't need to see it again. But uh, sometimes they change because the materials change. So I think that's so cool. I, I, this is one of the first places I've, I've been that is offering that service out that is come and learn something like that. Come and learn from me how to weather in a hands-on environment like this. I think that is something phenomenally unique Brett is offering here at this store. And I think that's something to really, um, it, it's capturing my attention how he's offering out his knowledge base like that to help you improve your interest in the hobby and your layout. You mentioned something else about building layouts? Yes, we build layouts for people. So and that is how we got started. I could just call you up and be like, hey, I got X amount of money and I got a space this big and I want to make a HO layout. And you could sit there from that point and help me put that together? Yes, sir. Or you could say, does that work like? Hey, I already built this layout. Got to. But it's kind of a quarter of the way done. <laughs> and I found them over my head. Yeah, that happens too. So help you build it and help you fix your mistakes. Yes. That 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 seems valuable to me. Helping fix the mistakes is the most valuable thing. <laughs> because most people get to a certain point and they've made a mistake and they don't know what to do about it. But the only mistake you can't fix is trying to fit a 36 inch radius into a 32 inch space. Math, you can't change the math, no. but you can, almost every other kind of mistake you can fix. Mm -hmm. And one of the important things to remember about model railroading is that model railroading is kind of unique in hobbies and it's both art and craft. Yes. And engineering. Mm. So the craft part is doing the things that you need to do well. That's the craftiness. Um, making sure that your rail joints are neat, making sure that your solder joints are neat, making sure that everything is put together correctly, making sure you have strong enough lumber for your understructure, make sure that your all these things are, are done well. Art is the visual part, whether it looks good. And nowadays sounds good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the engineering is whether or not it's able to work well. So if you have bad engineering, craftsmanship, craftsmanship is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. And that's something we try to emphasize to people is start with the engineering. You can't fake engineering. How it looks 
is entirely up to you. If you like it, it does not matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter a bit. If you like the way it looks, that's great. Mm -hmm. Nobody else's opinion matters. So whatever materials you use to do whatever you are doing, it, there's a thousand ways to make mountains. There's two of them we consider valid, but if you like the way it looks, <laughs> it doesn't matter what our opinion is at all. It doesn't make any difference. But the engineering, it matters. Yeah. So if you try to do something that the engineering, that the math won't let you do, then you're going to run into a problem. And we're here to explain the difference between engineering decisions and art decisions. So if you want to have your train go up a grade like this, it's 10%. Well, mm -hmm. you may like the way it looks, it's probably not going to work. Right. Uh, and, and so it's things like that 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 we're here to help people with. Most of the time, what we're getting is people wanting to know how to do specific things. I want to make a lake, I want to make a waterfall, I want to make a mountain, I want to make a forest. And we can actually explain that, teach it in a very short amount of time, teach them the basic skills. Then after that, it's just practice and do it until you like it. Uh, and something important to realize is sometimes you mess up and it doesn't come out the way you want it to, that happens to us too. Uh, we've had failure in doing things. Uh, we've discovered a lot of bad ways to do stuff, uh, a lot of problems, things that don't work. Um, so we kind of help people with that too. Like, uh, you can do it a lot of different ways, but this one, <laughs> this doesn't work. Well, that 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 does. Comp I mean, that's that's kind of a lot of the generalities about. Uh, I think even in just life, but it is. You know, you're gonna fail a little more than you're successful most of the time. You got, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and don't you, get discouraged. And to me, I have to remember that because I'm getting ready to do scenery, and 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 and, and I have to remember it's not gonna be right the first time. Sure, come to our scenery planet. Yeah, see, <laughs> I'm gonna have to be coming to one of these and check this out. And I think that's just that's so awesome, making that because um, information is gold. Mm -hmm. Experience. I mean, that's that's worth. It's it, it, it's a phenomenal thing, and for you to openly, freely share that out into the train community is just amazing. And thank you for doing that. There's a limit, though. Huh? The important thing is, people ask us all the time why we don't film our demos and post them on the internet. Uh huh. That's because it's not free. So sure. you got to come in if you want the information. We're we are in business. We sell stuff. Mm -hmm. and we want to sell you the right stuff, we teach you how to use it. If we put it out there for free, then somebody's going to sit at home and they're going to look at our video and they're, gonna not, they're not going to order their product from us. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually losing out on that deal. Sure. So, uh, you know, we have to, the reason we, do, we don't do these things as a general rule, we don't do these things as videos and so on. Is, is because we have to we have to survive as a business. That, that makes complete sense because if that's what people are coming to you for to get your information, you put it out in that way, it, it, and it is. It's a business. It's, it's, a business. it's and and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And you should be operating in that way because your intellectual property that you're that, that that's key. And you very well. I mean, I think that's spot on for you and how you're doing that. And I mean, and I'm I'm completely in agreement with you. It, to be doing it that way because you, your intellectual property is just amazing and the information you have like that but you put it out with your customers there's lots of people who just they, they don't want to do anything I mean, you know what i mean yeah. and all try to answer the questions figure out like here's the train you want to go yeah you know it, 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 it may never come back you know there's sometimes i've seen i've heard some train uh stores even say like i'll send people out without a train if at that moment that's not what they need, they'll be back for the right thing by sell them something they don't need or want, you know, for that long-term business. Because you have a lot of repeat business. I'm Most guessing. of our business yeah. is repeat. Almost yeah. all our business yeah. is repeat. So, I, I mean, with us pushing in, in, in doing this, I hope one thing we can do is, is ex uh, to help show the rail tails is here. And it is something about it. And it's not about giving away your secrets. It's about making it, oh, you're here. Mm -hmm. This is something that is here and, and, and to be able to interact with this store. And I think it's just, because it's a niche hobby we're in. It is. And it's, it's odd how 
people can be somewhere and you don't know the hobby store right down the road or mm -hmm. within places. And that's something we we're, we're really trying to just help the local brick and mortars to get through and, and to shine as they are in these great pillars of our community in the model railroading and how you guys really support it up without these stores. Then we'd be all online and always on hold and never get an answer. Well, you also, <laughs> there's more mistakes out there than there is good information. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, I, I do want to clarify something. Mm -hmm. We do answer email questions and we do answer phone questions. You don't sure. have to come in the store if you got a problem. Mm -hmm. A lot of our customers email us questions and, oh, how do I do this? We also put packages together. We have a number of customers that have actually never been to Charlottesville. But because mm -hmm. of our reputation, they get us to help them long distance with their projects. And so we send them packages and instructions of how to use the material. And then we, get, we go back and forth with, uh, with email and a few photographs um, mm -hmm. in order to explain how to do it. We've got a couple of really large layouts I've never seen because they're out of state and uh, being built by people that um, made contact with us and that we've helped them over the years and um, they've done really well. Uh, most of those begin with train repairs. Um, people send us their train and we fix the train and they're really happy and so then they're like, okay, well, can you help me do this? I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do it all the time. We do packages to get, we put packages together for people and send them, okay, here's everything you need in order to do this thing you want to do, and here's a list of directions of what to do with it. Use small amounts and practice and play with it until you're happy with the small sample. Don't try to build the mountain, the critical mountain of your layout. Don't build that first. You know, <laughs> don't do that first. You need to practice a little bit, get, get right. some things. Uh, it's always tempting the thing you most are excited about doing, the thing you want the most, you want to do that first. It's like, no, that, do that last, because that's the important thing, you know? Um, concentrate, on, concentrate on doing the things that aren't really that important. You know, do the background waterfall before you do the one that's six inches away from the front of the layout. Uh, things like that. Um, weather the cars you don't care about before you do that. Oh, my brass model, I messed it up. You know? Yeah. <laughs> don't, uh, don't. Uh, that's just generally good advice in any hobby. Mm -hmm. Practice so you get the technique down for, you know, don't push the button on the airbrush for the first time aimed at your $500 brass model. That would be a, that would be a mistake. Yeah, I would, I, yes. that, that makes complete sense to me and I haven't weathered anything. That's half the thing that scares me about it is doing it wrong. And There's techniques we can teach mm. you that are reversible. Mm. And that's kind of one of the things is like if you're nervous about it and you haven't done it before, there's a couple of really good techniques which are totally reversible. You don't like the look, you can get rid of it, start over. It's not permanent until you make it permanent. Okay. Uh, and th there's also some techniques which it's like, okay, yeah, that's a little different, but it's not quite what I want. But it's the, 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 the finish is so thin that, that you can just continue to weather over top of it. Oh. One thing about model railroading is you cannot, literally cannot make the trains too dirty. Yeah, right. Because in the real world, I mean, unless it's fresh from the factory, but mm -hmm. anything that's been on the rails for 10 years, it's going to be really dirty. Yeah. How dirty and messed up it is depends on how well it's treated. So, you know, CSX, it's probably going to be pretty awful. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no bias, though. No, 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 no bias no. at all. <laughs> we never have anything like that. The Norfolk Southern Main Line runs mm, 100 feet okay. from our store, so we see their trains all the time, so we're surprised. Yeah. So sometimes we bring people over, it's like, is anything you like, we'll look at the trucks. Um, I see orange. That's cold. Yeah, that's, you could almost that's a knock cool someone bridge. out with that. Yeah. So anyway, this is the great Civil War layout that we're working on. Wow. So this is Gordonsville here, or will be, and then you go around, and this is the Ravana River. This is Morris Creek. Well, the mills will go here. None of these things mean anything to you, but if you were local, you'd know. <laughs> and then uh, this goes around. And then this is uh, Meacham's River Crossing, at one time the longest Hal Truss bridge in the world. Um, hmm. And then this is actually Three Chop Road. Three Chop Road goes up. This is the uh, town of Afton. Um, and that is Little Rock Tunnel. And that is. A really Brooksville tunnel, but we're using it as Blue Ridge Tunnel. Wow. Blue, Blue Ridge Tunnel doesn't have a uh, rock portal, it's just rock face like this. But Brooksville has a, uh, a hat, a tunnel wow. like that. This is amazing. Um, 
I mean, how long has this been under construction? About okay. a year. A year. A little less than a year. Um, and we'll finish it probably in the next couple of weeks. Actually, the hold up, um, they'll have the building done in the next couple of days. But the hold up is the kit for building Lula Mill. Because there's only one company that makes something that we can use at downtown Decker, right. which makes stuff like once a year. Uh, so supposedly the woman we need is coming back out on the 22nd of February. So um, okay. and then we'll take it. It'll take us about a week. So uh, we've got one guy stacked building the Annie Miller Mansion. There's nobody to make some all of it. Although we may actually do that to make you work that into something we sell the product. It's doing a good job doing that. Uh, Dan, who's the lead elf. Okay. How you doing, Dan? Hi, I'm Brian. Hi. This is, this is James, who is the support elf. Hello. Uh, how you doing? Hi. And this is Mike. Hi, James. Hi, Brian. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, yeah. too. We have a YouTube channel, uh, Cross Anchors Railroads. Oh, okay. And, um... They're going to make you famous. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to check us out on the back of the QR code. Okay. We're mostly, uh, we are O-Scale 3 round guys. Oh. And, um... But we're like a fan of the, you know, model railroading and like with all of our subscribers and stuff and we have guys everywhere and all the scales, but what you guys are doing here, uh, wow. I mean, I know I have people that have, that, that, you know, are part of our group we have that you're familiar also with Discord. Yeah, I'm big with Okay. Discord. Well, we, uh, it's a, uh, it's a server chat room. Yeah. And you go in, it was mostly for gaming, but we have um, some other that did it for model router. And we have like 150 people that just go on Discord, and it's, we talk train seven days a week, 24 7. <laughs> it's train, any scale. And it's great for, I got this issue, what's going on? And you'll get an answer from somewhere in the world in 10 minutes. Huh. You know, and it's, it's, it's a funny community we're really trying to build in that interaction of what model robbery can bring you and it's just not a bunch of dirty old men in their basement. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so cool. He's of course going to be set later, but yeah. I guess you're not aware what they're going to look like. You know, this is going to be broken into two pieces and transported and reassembled, so that's why there's this crack in the middle. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. That's so cool. This four by six fits in my van. Yeah. <laughs> Very talented. I, it's blown away. I mean, this is the 2000 trees. Wow. On this? Yes. Kind of might make sure. <laughs> you go ahead. Or is this close enough for government work? <laughs> this is. Oh, wow. I mean, this is the other project that's. We'll finish this up sometime this time. Sometime in May, probably. This is all Markland. So Markland turns tighter and, and climbs steeper than other than than American two rail HO. Really? So four percent is like no problem for them. And these are this is less Why than ten inch radius. They designed that way because they're, they're German, so they're designed for the European market where everything's smaller. Yeah, but are they heavier to do it? They have traction tires. Also have heavier motors, uh, more powerful motors, which means they're no more current, but we're designed to do that. But this is this is less than 30 inches. So that shows you how tight they can turn. So what's the minimum in regular 18, right? The minimum standard radius for 80% of the market is 18. About 10% of the market can go down to 15. And about 10% of the market requires 22 of that. Most of that. 
particular. Markman makes a big boy. Their big boy can do 14 to 7 8 radius. It will actually go scale, down. Though. Yes. Their big boy will actually do this layout. will do this turn. That's to be a hell of a hang up. Uh, yeah, it overhangs three inches. Mm. So it wipes out everything on the right away. Mm. But you can if you want to, then. Yeah. So I mean, what, what people do is they can have a hidden turnaround that's like small like this, where you don't see it, and have the trains turn around and then have wider radiuses also. So you had mentioned with Marklin, and it's so I'm keeping it like standard stuff for like HON scale, mm -hmm. it's DCC operation. Yes. And is that what they use? Originally they used AC. Okay. Um, and they actually uh, invented a really, really clever way of doing their reverse unit by using a power surge rather than doing a power off. Lionel is basically, it cycles well and, and everything made sense in this whole design so when you turn the power off to the track, it cycles through the reverse. And uh, the, the Marklin one does it. It cycles when you add, put a surge to the track. Mm -hmm. So by, because of that, you turn the train on and off and it's, it'll keep going the same direction that you had it going before, whether you turn so it makes it a lot easier to control at short range. Mm. Um, and they also, they can set up the reverse units so that they also cycle um, uh, for remote control and couplers. So they had remote control and couplers back before World War II. Mm. And it operated anywhere on the layout, they're called Helix. It was a really clever design. But this third rail is what is cool, because it has all the advantages. This is a rail. It is. This little set of studs. There's a skid shoe on the bottom of the train that hits that, that picks up the power, and that means there's neutral. Just so, like three rail. So this, this is, is this is AC three rail. Yes, it is AC three rail. Until they went to digital. Their digital trains, the control boards have a rectifier so they can still operate on AC, but their digital system is DC, just like DCC is. So you could take like a regular DCC unit can operate a Marklin train on the any modern way? ones, yes. Modern. Because the modern the modern decoders are Marklin Motorola format and DCC format, so they understand both. They started off just being Motorola format. Motorola was the first was actually came before DCC. The Motorola, Motorola did, like yeah, the, the Motorola, company Motorola, yes. okay. They created the digital format for Marklin's trains way back in the eighties. Yeah. They had digital trains way early before anybody else did. The reason we have DCC the way it is, instead of using the Motorola, the Motorola format's actually better. The reason we use DCC is because Marklin did not want, they kept the product proprietary. Uh -huh. So if you wanted to use their system, you had to pay the money in order to duplicate their system, rather than making it free for everybody like DCC. Uh -huh. So DCC is not as good, but, but it's, free. it's free, and everyone can do it, and it's good enough. Initially, the differences were pretty stark because 20 years ago, the decoder capabilities were not great. Right. Nowadays, you, the chips can do anything, so there's no mm -hmm. effective difference. Um, the main things that are different in Motorola format, um, the digital controllers have pictures of everything. So rather than have, having to remember that horn is function one, you know, there's a picture of a horn. <laughs> it's right. like push the button next to the picture of a horn, it blows the horn. Push picture next to, next to the picture of the light, turns the light on, uh, and you name the trains um, similar to how you can with DCS, where you can name the train. Mm -hmm. uh, although DCS is kind of hard to rename the train your own name, but you can. Um, yeah, now with that, that's why like I switched to all, went beyond, I, 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 like I'm on all the apps, mm -hmm. because I have MTHDCS and have Legacy. Mm -hmm. And I, I have two TIUs, eight 180 watt packs. They, okay. they go out of five mains, yeah, my sure. yard, engine, and my passenger terminal. Yeah. And my grades are three, between two and four yeah. percent, depending on the space that I had yeah, at the time going up and down. And yeah. I traverse, we traverse five levels, they go over four and a half feet, and it's all interconnected. Because like I, when I built this, I was like, I, I want to be able to take my a big boy mm -hmm. anywhere. Yeah. So nothing under road 72, oh, and yeah. it goes up sure. to 96. Yeah. And that sounds awesome. <laughs> it's it's been fun. Yeah, you'll you'll see it. Uh, you know, go check out our channel. We got mm -hmm. lots of different run vids, but um, 
it has, it's just, like you said, you get in there and now with on the apps and how you can change, you can go in there and name what you want. But did you see the new line out? The line out voice control? Mm -hmm. And that's on the app. Anything that's Bluetooth where you just talk into now on your phone and it'll command the train. It's just, that's just, just got released last month. So anything in the future will have it, but if yeah, you have the, software. and if you have the newest Bluetooth being made this year in further 5.0, you can record your voice mm -hmm. and up to four or five different things, and it'll play through the train like the regular train sounds. Yeah. And you can do that, but that's like DCS does. Yes, yeah, but DCS was doing that quite. But I don't know if you could record it. Oh yeah, yeah, you definitely can. You can make your own recordings and play it through DCS for sure. Yep. On a PAU. Yeah. I didn't know you could record it. I put my voice through it, but I didn't know you could record on DCS. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. It's not the easiest thing in the world. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's kind of interesting. That's neat. Yeah, because yeah. you, can, you can reprogram the sounds in DC, uh, for the digital. For right. You can put, DCS. like, any sound file on any engine. Yeah. Unlike Lionel makes it like chip, and that's that. Yeah. And, but now Lionel's doing the things a little differently. And doing You're off, hopefully. So. Yeah, but yeah. Notice so the people. construction of how we built this thing. Look at the construction of it. Yeah. How we put it together. Oh. And this. Oh, this is just what? Is that that? A product called Paylight. Our new greatest 100% you love this thing stuff. Because you can cut it with a knife, but you can screw screws into it so you can screw the track down. It's designed to be painted. It's actually sign material. You get it from a local sign company. And uh, it, you can carve it, so you can carve like stonework into it and things like that. But mostly, it's the quarter inch is sturdy enough that if you support it, it, it gets, lets you do all smooth rises and everything without having to go to plywood. Because it's way lighter than plywood. Yeah. And you don't need a saw. You just cut it with a knife. And what is it called? It's called Paylight. Paylight. That's nice. We have been sending a lot of people over to our local print shop in order to buy this stuff because you show them this this design, it's like you could build this whole thing in a few hours. Like, hell yeah, people want to do that. And is this <laughs> the combination you were talking about? Yeah, the... that's, that's Shape Machine Sculpture. So that actually is a good cutaway of how it works. Oh, look underneath. It's, it's like shiny metal. Yeah, you crinkle it. That's felt on one side, oh, it's bare metal on the other. You crinkle it up, that's what gives it the strength. And then you put the sculpture mold on the felt side, it sticks to the felt and becomes one. That's, that's really cool. And it's mm -hmm. hard enough that yeah. oh, wow. you got it, it doesn't crack. Yeah, because if this was here, you'd really be supported. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be Yeah, because you, so, yeah, yeah that's this part over here, mm -hmm. you, can, you can beat on it, it doesn't crack. Wow. Okay, so, so if somebody's here and they kind of lean on the layout, it's not going to get. Nope, don't know anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. a lot of finish work, obviously. Mm -hmm. the they're here store. at the store. So, any of you guys that are interested in some of these things that, that, that Brett has mentioned, that, there's some unique stuff here. And you just heard Brett tell you he's willing to talk to you about a package to tell you all the parts you need to do some of your projects. And not everybody's willing to do that or capable of doing that. And I think, and, and again, I'm I'm really blown away by that, as to how much you want to work with your customers and, are, and, and want to help them. If they're successful, they'll be happy. And if they're happy, we're happy. Well, Brett, uh, so far, I mean, we're thrilled being here and having a blast in your store. And thank you we're so much. Happy. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to have fun uh, finishing going through here. COVID bump. And... Uh, <laughs> We'll be seeing you when we're back in Charlottesville. All right, guys.
very cool as we uh, keep going through. All the magnets. I don't know. Interesting. Look at all the different magnets they have. This is so cool. What do you use the magnets for? A lot of different things. I use them to replace the Katie rail magnets and put them in the rails in yeah. order to operate on couplers. Mostly what they're used for is they're used by gamers. Uh, if you're a miniature battle gamer, the figures have different equipment that they're allowed to have. And you're supposed to show the correct equipment on the figure. So they'll give you an arm with the sword and an arm with the bow and an arm with the lance or whatever. And you put magnets in the arm and in the body and then you can change them out and have the different equipment on the... Yeah, that's actually really cool. That, that that's really neat. That, that is actually the primary use for them is for, and also for tanks. They have vehicles that have, you know, large tanks and you've got different turrets that go on them and so on. So that's why the bigger magnets. Uh, you can also use them for holding tools and things like that. But the main reason they're using them, mostly they're used for miniature. Okay. That's really neat. I, I, I've never seen them just sitting uh, You can also use them for holding buildings on two layouts. That is... That's actually a really cool idea. I like that. I, I mean, that's like my mind's like running right now going, where would I have found uh, like use that I would have had for magnets like this already? Oh, look at the little one. Look at that. Look at these little bitty things in there. It's crazy. I, that's really neat. All the, I mean... This you just normally don't see around. We do a lot of scratch building, so what we keep is what we use. Mm. We use everything on this shelf many, many times. We probably scratch built close to 200 buildings in the last seven years. Wow. Look at, look, look, look at the details for the lumber down here, Mike. In the yeah. corrugated metal. I mean, it's wicked. Sorry, you engaged guys don't get as much cool stuff. No, we don't, do we? <laughs> <laughs> there is some cool stuff if you can do an engage. A lot of things are cool stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of quarter scale things out there, so lumber's no problem. You just use everything in quarter scale. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. So, are these cut ties? Yes, for hand laid rail. Yeah, I hear people doing that. I don't know. That's another service we offer. We custom make sections of track that you cannot buy commercially. So we've done, like, I just did one that was an 85 degree double curve crossing. So cr crossing was 85 degrees, not 90. And both tracks were curved at um, 24 inch radius. And there was two of them back to back. So totally custom, but the layout required it. Hmm. Yeah, you're. you're Bound by your he tried to fit it and make it 90 it was straights and it just didn't work and the mm -hmm. wheels were kinked and the trains were not operate correctly so we custom built the piece and that worked great that's really cool um you want to do the talk with him okay okay what are we